The following podcast is intended for mature audiences. If you enjoy our work, please like, comment, subscribe, and follow the links in the description. Thanks for your support, and enjoy. Greetings and salutations, listeners. I, Eric J. Chucky, joined, as always, by... The guy who does stuff with me, the boy. Yeah. This is Two Nerds Podcast, and, uh, well, as a tantalizing teaser for your likely near futures listener, we do have a Dungeons & Dragons questionnaire podcast. A long one, actually, uh, loaded and ready to go. But that's that's an anytime snack, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And it's good to have one on docket. But we, we've both been up to a lot of shit lately. And while we haven't gotten into anything timely and neither of us really felt like watching a pay-per-view with WrestleMania looming on the horizon and all five hours of its girth, uh, we, we figured we'd just sort of catch you guys up on what's been going on in the Two Nerds household. Yeah, basically this is going to be one of those, you know, hey, what are we up to this week? Yeah. Podcasts. Um, thankfully, we actually have stuff to talk about, which is neat. I have a lot, and what you have, we can talk about at length, so. Um, you want to go first? Um, uh, yeah, let me, let me cover a couple of things real quick here. Uh, I saw A Wrinkle in Time. Um, I read the first book of the series when I was a kid. I haven't read the others. Uh, this is what that movie was about. Um, uh, quick review, if you read the book... Um, expect them to be translating it into a movie. As in, like, certain things that you might have loved when you were young got cut in favor of it only being two hours, not three. Um, but it's good. It's a good interpretation. It keeps a spirit. And it's fun. And it's beautiful. Um, if you haven't read it, all of that, except you're not going to be upset about certain things they cut. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I haven't seen it because I haven't read it, nor do I give a shit, so... I think you should probably like listen to an audiobook or something. It's not terribly long. You can probably finish it in an afternoon. It doesn't seem like it's going to be up my alley, to be honest. That's interesting. From what I understand, it's very much like a like more of a children's novel. It, it, it is like and, like it's not that I'm so adult. I mean, I I, I would liken Harry it Potter to movies. yeah. I, I would exactly liken it to Harry Potter. Maybe not the first book, but like the second or third. Mm, the third is higher praise than the second, and. I'm, I'm thinking in terms of tone. I actually listened to a, don't mention a better podcast on your podcast, a different podcast about an adult guy who's never read Harry Potter who's listening to it for the first time, and I don't know that I want to experience firsthand that level of cynical shitting on a thing that other people enjoyed during childhood. Well, don't be cynical, and you don't have to. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will do my best. Well, I mean, you know, if you've got other shit to do, do other shit. I would certainly recommend it. It's a good story. Um, oh, and Train is here. I don't know if he's picking up for you guys, but I hope so. It's been a while. Hey, Train. Um, and then uh, I've got a lot of stuff to talk about, so let me dip into Monster Hunter World. Um, I've never played a Monster Hunter game before. They've always looked kind of boring to me, but I've been hearing so much about it, and I don't know, for some reason, this one just uh, piqued my interest. So um, we picked it up, got it all on sale, actually, and uh, it's good. It's a lot of fun. I'm not very far in it, I don't think. Um, just fought on Zora Magdaros for the first time. Uh, but I, I dig it a lot. I, I mostly use the uh, Hunter's Horn and the Insect Glaive. Um, I, I don't really have a whole lot to say. It's not... If you were looking for a review thus far, the feedback, feedback loop is a lot more satisfying than I thought it would be. Really? Um, yeah, I, I figured it was going to be like the less fun version of grinding in an MMO, um, but the fights are so dynamic and engaging, it's, I don't know, it's really cool, and I like the hunting aspect, and if you haven't played the game before, this is really, like the series, this is really the time to jump on, because there have been, I never have, so. there have been so many quality of life adjustments from what I understand, that like, I would not have cared to play this game before. Like, if I had picked it up, I would have been like, yeah, this is dumb. Um, not so in this one. And uh, you get to customize your cat. Any game where you can customize your cat is good in my book. I go adventuring with Trixie, who is running around as we record this podcast. 
I've mostly been playing a game I've been meaning to buy for a while. And by for a while, I don't mean Battle Royale for a while. No. I mean a reasonable period of time. It's only been about a year, I think, since it came no. out. No, no, that game came out in 2015. Oh, did it? Okay. Um, and I... That's weird. Didn't the new one just drop? No. What? Like Shadow of the Tomb Raider or something? If you if, talk, I'll yeah, Google. Yeah, we'll I have no idea roles. what the hell you're talking about. Um, so, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Um, You've been meaning to pick it up, and you finally did. Yeah, I had been meaning to pick it up for a while, but not enough that I wanted to buy it for full price, because I liked the first game quite a lot, but I didn't buy it for full price. I got it for free from Xbox um, Gold. And so, I'm talking, of course, about Rise of the Tomb Raider. I played the Tomb Raider reboot, which I maybe have mentioned on the podcast before, that I liked quite a bit. I think we have. I think it was very fun. I think it was, as someone who wasn't humongously into the old Tomb Raider games, I liked them, but, like, they weren't my jam. I, I thought it was fun. I thought it was a cool story, and I really liked some of the mechanics. Um, this game, for me, um, this the new one here... Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, it's... I don't want to say it's not as good. It That's inaccurate. I think it actually is probably a little better in terms of um, how the game runs, in terms of the game's like mechanics being more rewarding, the various different things you can do, like making your equipment better and all that is a little bit more rewarding in this game, at least as far as I remember, but... For whatever reason, I didn't, I didn't love it the same way I loved the first one. I'm not done playing it yet. I've beaten the main story, and I've gotten, I would say, I think the game said I was seventy percent done. And I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not pro Gerard, so I'm not gonna try and one hundred percent the game. But I haven't done all the stuff I want to do yet. I've got a couple of the challenge tombs left to complete. But I say it was a good game. Uh, I it didn't it didn't win me over quite like the quite like the first reboot did, but I don't think that's a failing on the game's part. I feel like uh, it's perhaps the genre shifted just a little bit more towards more of an Uncharted-style set-piece game. Um, but there are parts of it that are also bits, uh, are, are also one, more classic Tomb Raider, and two, um, things that I loved in the first game. In the first game, I loved the challenge tombs. They were all very much separate. They were all very much on their own, but um, off to the side where you could just walk right past them. But uh, and that's kind of the same in this game. The challenge, the optional challenge tombs are still locked off where you don't need to go through them. See that that caused me problems when I sat down to try to play the the first new Tomb Raider. Um, like the gameplay wasn't super engrossing to me in the first place. I could see that. But uh, it wasn't, like, bad or anything. It just wasn't wasn't a game I would have picked up on my own. You know what I mean? But uh, I got to, like, the first challenge to him, and, like, I didn't... Even though I knew I could, I didn't feel like I could move on until I finished it. Yeah, whereas, like, in this game, it's... One, they do a better job of making it clear that those are optional challenge tombs. Mm-hmm. Um, and two, they also do a better job of integrating the puzzly mechanics that are a part of the challenge tombs into the main game. They do that a lot more. Yeah, was Still, that not a big thing? Because I didn't get no. In the in the first reboot, it was very much more. Actually, honestly, it was more of an act. It was a different game. I don't want to say more actiony because this one had felt like it had a lot more big set pieces and big. You know, you're running through a thing and the pre-scripted events where the thing breaks happens and you have to fight off dudes. Um, that, felt like saw... it, that felt like it happened a lot more in this one. But at the same time, the first one had a lot fewer sections where I was expected to navigate a puzzly area. From what I saw... Um, and I like both those things. This game was a lot more... I don't think I have anything to compare it to, so I'm going to assume like Uncharted. Yeah, that's whereas, basically what I... Neither of us have played the Uncharted games, really, but that's basically what I would compare it to as well. Whereas the first game seemed like it was a lot more like uh, the Arkham series. In terms of, you get to this big room 
or this cave big or forest. whatever. Yeah, and there's bad guys, and you got to figure out how to take them out to get to the other side. Yeah, it was, and whereas, and there's some of that in this, there's, but it's it's a lot more limited. Um, more often, what will happen is like you're there'll be one or two guys, and then when it's time to fight dudes, there's a whole lot of fucking dudes, and mm-hmm. and you're just having like a running gun like battle. Now, I still played those like Batman, uh, or rather like Murder Batman, so <laughs> like a character from Assassin's Creed. Um, because I prefer to play games like I prefer to play those games like that. And if you give me a bow and arrow, I I know I've made it clear on the podcast how much I like bow guys. If you give me a bow and arrow, I'm going to use it. So I I really enjoyed the game. I've enjoyed all the challenge tombs. The only things I would criticize are the story's a little predictable. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, given the genre and given the series, uh, but it, it is fairly predictable. There wasn't a point in the story where I was surprised. Um, and also, it is frustrating at times because it relies occasionally on keeping you and the people you are and the, and the main antagonists away from each other outside of cutscenes. So I was often forced to sit back and lament my inability to just fucking shoot them. When they're right in arm's reach. Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is supposed to come out uh, later this year. Fall is the current speculated time. Oh, neat. Um, well, I played the uh, first game about 2015, so I think I've established a pattern. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, you know, it might have been later. That might have been why I thought it came out later, because I think we got it for free through The Xbox. thing that's coming out recently, or just came out, is the movie adaptation of the first reboot. Yeah, yeah, I knew that dropped. I just, uh, I thought I'm, I'd see I'm the... not going to go see it in theaters. I, I'll watch it at Netflix or Hulu or wherever it shows up, because I will watch it. That's, that sounds fun, but uh, no, that's not worth going to a theater for. I'm sorry. I'm not a big Tomb Raider fan in the first place. I, uh... I'm a fan of this iteration. I don't know if I've told this story on the podcast. Oh, fun. Maybe I have, and if I have, I apologize, listener. No, I don't. It's a good story. Um, so let me take you back to uh, uh, the the mid to late nineties. Okay, um, I don't have an exact date, and I don't feel like pulling up Wikipedia numbers. It was uh, before the launch of Final Fantasy VIII, but after the PlayStation came out, Electronic Gaming Monthly released their April issue, wherein it contained um, codes and tips. On how to achieve the nude ending in Tomb Raider. Mm. No, oh, oh, that that is some fucking. My mom found this magazine because she was considering getting me a PlayStation, and wanted to see if it was you know something people liked, if it was worth it, because it was going to be a surprise. Which kudos to her for all that. That's great. That's that's great parenting. That's good researching. A plus. Yeah, I mean, as a parent, you want to look into what you're getting. Sure. Um, she saw. The April issue of Electronic Gaming Monthly. And uh, decided, no, this system seems too adult for my son. Fair enough. Except that as most of you know, that was an April Fool's joke. That was an April Fool's joke so legendary that other magazines and internet rumor houses picked it up. Because we didn't data mine shit back then, you know? Uh, and, And something like that wouldn't have been in the official... You know, Prima strategy guide. But um, until shortly after the release of Final Fantasy VIII, I did not receive a PlayStation. Um, I think by that time I was hmm, 16-ish. So at that point, I was old enough. And I didn't want to play Tomb Raider anyway. (laughs) Like, the game didn't super interest me in the first place, but gosh, if I didn't have a grudge against it for a long time after that, for that exact reason... Uh, And even worse, a couple of years ago, when I found out that it was an April Fool's joke. So, um, while I don't still hold those menaces, I've I've tried to play the original series, or a remaster of the original series, I think. Didn't really care for it. I I got my fill of uh, IDOS block-pushing puzzles in Soul Reaver. April 1997. 1997. I was really close. 
Um, <laughs> so from April 1997 until the release date of February Final Fantasy. 1999. 1999. So that's that's you know a couple years. Yeah, it was good times. And actually, I didn't get that until my birthday. So it was October of 1999 that uh, I, I did eventually get my PlayStation. But um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I sat down and tried to play the first one. Like I said, I just the controls weren't great. And I didn't, you know, it didn't feel like the puzzles... I would want those puzzles to be part of the game. Like... I originally played it on PC, so I don't yeah. know how it controls on the on the, on the the uh, peasant device. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I do want to make one thing clear out there to all ten of you, listener. Uh, everybody who talks about the PC Master Race and how the PC is oh such God, a better engine... Oh, God, I love this. I love this. I don't know if you know what I'm going to talk about. It's it's a great device. Don't get me wrong. It's fantastic that you can upgrade your hardware to be able to run new software. Mm-hmm. But unless you're playing an FPS, everybody uses a fucking Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller. Oh no, I was I was laughing about the fact that it it's it's a bit like it started as a as a joke about how smug oh, PC yeah, gamers no. were. And then it just became all PC gamers going, no, we are exactly that smug. That's accurate. Well, but and <laughs> I believe we talked about that in our uh, history of number one games, uh, which was sometime this year, I believe. But, um, yeah, no. Uh, like, I, every, I don't think that's true. Like, that I... Most people, I mean, there, there are games you play with a mouse. You play first-person shooters with a mouse and keyboard. You play... Like World of Warcraft with a mouse and keyboard. There are plenty of games you play with a mouse. Most people who are playing AAA titles like Tomb Raider do it with a controller. I'm gonna look that up because do you, what do you mean by most people? Do you mean like Everyone the six streamers seen, you've seen? I've seen way more than six I, streamers. I I've read like, about way more. I than, feel like that's probably a warp statistic. I it's it's just a smoother experience for certain games. Uh, FPS, definitely. 100%, you're going to be using a mouse and keyboard. You'd be shooting yourself in the foot, possibly literally, if you didn't. But, uh... I just, I don't... I, without some sort of backup data on that, I'm sorry, I don't buy that. I find because that... Because I was playing Tomb Raider earlier today on a controller, because I was playing it on the console. And I would... There were, like, four situations where I would fully have preferred to be using a mouse and keyboard. And that's fair, and maybe there are more people that do it, but I usually when I hear PC gamers talk about it, I hear them, um, you know, I, the people who are using a mouse and keyboard for these kinds of games are in the minority, uh, in, to the extent that they're surprised that they use a mouse and keyboard. Or they will say something like, I'm very different from the norm, I use a mouse and keyboard for these games. My ex- personal experience, and you know what, if you guys know any better, there's a comment section below. Just type your thoughts in there, and uh, hit the like button. And subscribe. Don't touch that fucking bell. I don't care. <laughs> I don't want to annoy anyone that much ever. Uh, but uh, bringing off of that, um, I didn't care too much for Tomb Raider. Uh, and I, I sat down earlier, uh, late last year, and I may have talked about this as well, forgive me, to play Assassin's Creed 3. Um, or no, not 3. Was it 3? It was 3. Okay. Okay. They had their their nomenclature is more arcane three. than Grand Theft Auto. Um, it was three. <laughs> so, because I had been seeing stuff about uh, he has played the beginning of Assassin's Creed three at this point three times. By the way, just so we're clear, <laughs> once my save messed up. Uh, it's not a fun beginning, but um, I did get farther, and uh, but yeah, I'd seen Origins, and I was like, this looks really cool. You know, Egypt. Um, just a lot of stuff about it seemed really cool. I dug the setting a lot, but here I've got three to play, and, and not to mention we have all of the Assassin's Creed games up till three. And, I I've, I played two and, and Black I, Flag. And I beat two. But yeah, basically, if I was going to be looking at this new game, I needed to, you know. I needed to try what we had and not just be like, oh, it was shiny. Uh, so I sat down with three again, and it was a frustrating experience. Uh, you watched almost the entirety of my playthrough, I believe. Mm-hmm. What would you What would you quantify my experience as? A combination of frustration with the actual controls of the game and deep admiration for Haytham Kenway. 
<laughs> you were fighting that game for the for the privilege of getting to watch more Haytham Kenway being a cool guy. Yeah. And I, I will say I that... I just uh, don't think that game's controls are ever going to be something you like. Mm -mm. Well, and I liked 75% um, of the Arkham games. The Arkham games really are the best of that genre, which is sad for Assassin's Creed since they created that genre. Mm, I think somebody else actually did. They just popularized it. But... Uh, mm. There are other bits of it in different other games, That's but fair. Assassin's Creed were the ones who really codified that. Galvanized as, it. Yeah, who really, like, who who put it together, who made it into a thing, into its own unique, the Assassin's Creed game genre. Yeah. And, like, that's sad for them that they got so wildly upstage so completely, but then again, Arkham Knight exists, so nobody's perfect. Uh <laughs> Uh, and that's... I never finished Arkham Knight because... The car. Um, it's the car, isn't it? Everyone hates the car. I... <sighs> Chicks dig the car. Yeah. I don't think they do if they play the fucking game. <laughs> they do if they like vehicular manslaughter and fighting remote control tanks. <laughs> there was so much about that game I wanted to get into. Uh, like, the... I was so excited Professor Pig was in there. Um, who who the fuck's run was that? Grant Morrison? I believe so, yeah. Everything he did when he took over Batman. All those villains he came up with? Oh my god. So I was really excited that Professor Pig was in the game. I, I, you and I had a bit of an argument about it, and I was like, oh, that's Professor Pig! And you're like, no, it's not Professor Pig. They're not going to put him in the game, because really, why would they? But it was, and I was excited. Yeah, I literally, I said, they're not... No one's going to put Professor fucking Pig in the game. And uh, I had to eat I had to eat some crow on that one. And if they had included Mary Maker, maybe I would have fought a little harder. But Man Bat was in there. I love Man Bat. I did most of his quests, but I just... Like, it was one of those things where I wanted to get the other upgrades, to be able to do shit easier. And to do that, I had to play the main game. And there were so many times you'd run into shit in the street where it's like, all right, now you got to do the fucking D-pad tank missions and... It just, it wasn't fun. It yep, was tedious. created by Grant Morrison and Andy Cooper. Yeah, I thought so. I thought so. Um, but I didn't want to be wrong on the internet. Yeah, because then someone might comment below. Comment below about how right the boy is. Congratulate him. Pat on the back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Damn One of these it. Days. Damn it. You laughed too quickly and I couldn't get my Ted Cruz. I couldn't get my jab. Please clap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 Jebby. <laughs> uh, but. So, yeah, I, I couldn't get into it. And, and and here I'm playing Assassin's Creed 3. And, God, there was a point where I had walked back and forth. Literally, all the fuck I did was walk back and forth between two places three times. And I was out. <laughs> One of those... It's, it's, it was... Uh... <clears throat> Okay, if you've played Assassin's Creed 3, you know this part. It's right after you get to the homestead, when they're showing you around the homestead, and they're getting you used to walking to the places you'll need to go, and they're having you, you go through the what is supposed to be kind of a frustrating situation where, uh, you know, Achilles is refusing to teach um, Connor. And the, they have you walk back and forth. <laughs> Uh, well, it's when you get into the places. shipwright. It's when you, you go to the shipwright. I didn't get that frustrated until they were like, all right, now go to the shipwright. And I went to him, and he's like, Yara, go back to your, your friend. And I went back to Achilles, and he was like, all right, now go back to the shipwright. So I went back to the shipwright, and he was like, all right, now you can go back to Achilles. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> On one of those trips. And the best part is it's a really, really long walk, and you can't fast travel, and it's also a pain in the ass. <laughs> On one of those trips. In the water, I look into the sky, whereupon a hammer is softly floating past me. A war hammer, just so we're clear. <laughs> like as if the spirit of his assassins, two of his assassins' creed to playthrough, was haunting him. <laughs> just get out while you can, and it floated away. Ah. <sighs> So, um, you know, I don't mind glitches in games. I don't mind a little tedium, but, like, it just wasn't... 
It wasn't selling me on the experience. It was just not but what he, I was looking for. He did soldier for. on. He did soldier on until the game soft froze. Uh, yeah, that was what finally happened. And I was like, you know what? You stuck him in the ledger of all things. In the ledger, yes. I opened that and the game was like, I don't understand math. Fuck you, get out. <laughs> and you were like, gladly, sir. And you slammed the door. And I uninstalled it then and there. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but I did find something that, that, that was the controls I wanted from that. And I, as that's to say, I finally picked up uh, um, Metal Gear Five: uh, Phantom Pain. Good lord! I mean, I know I'm really late to the game on this one, um, and I know all the spoilers for it, so don't worry about that. But there's a fire whale. <laughs> there is a fucking fire whale, dude. Um, man, this game is fun. Uh, I've gotten to a point where, like, I don't really want to continue, so I'm fine doing other shit for a while. It's the first time you get into a big base where there's guys in little Metal Gear walkers, oh, that's that is my least favorite shit. Is is that kind of thing? Like I remember it. It was okay in Snake Eater when I had the Rambo rifle and I turned on auto fire and started yelling. That made it fun. I don't have that right now. It's just a lot of. It's very difficult and it's not not the kind of fun I like to have in this game. It, it's just a little too hard for me. I had a similar experience because I beat Tomb Raider. Um, and it was fun, and it, it was actually, uh, it was really rewarding, and I always felt like the time I spent tracking down stuff and looking up stuff, and that was cool and fun, because it was little artifacts, and they told little stories, and I always felt like the time, the extra time I took to find all the stuff was really paying off, because all the perks I bought for combat felt really impactful. Uh, I really did like the mechanics of this game, and... Um, I told you that story to tell you this story. <laughs> the end of the game really kind of uh, does away... All right, so game design theory, at least as far as I'm aware, is you want to build a character's skills up throughout the course of the game, teach them new things, introduce new mechanics, and then the end of the game should be putting all of those skills to the test. The end of Tomb Ra Rise of the Tomb Raider doesn't really do that. Um... Because it's a couple, you know, heavy combat situations, and then there is, like, quick platforming and a couple things. But the two big final boss battles, as it were, one of them is against the antagonist, of the one of the two main antagonists throughout the course of the game. And the other one is against a helicopter. And in neither of those are you using most of the mechanics that you've learned throughout the game. In the helicopter fight, you basically are just hiding from the helicopter until you can get someone off screen to shoot a catapult, and then you wait until the flaming ball of catapult uh, fire is above the helicopter, and then you shoot it to blow it up above the helicopter and damage it. Because the helicopter is too quicky fast and keeps dodging the, the catapult itself. That's fine and all. But it's mostly just a waiting game, and sometimes the bitch who's running the fucking heli uh, the fucking catapult aims really badly. <laughs> so it's mostly just waiting while taking damage and, gr and like, sucking away your healing items as you have to heal from being shot by a fucking helicopter. And it's, it's just frustrating, and it takes a little too long, and I died a couple times because I got... Because the helicopter caught me in a bad situation and I got wrecked. Um, and also because the first life, I literally didn't know what the game wanted me to do um, before I die. But then the second boss battle, it happens really soon after that, is a boss battle against Constantine, one of the two main antagonists. And the first thing he does is he sneaks up on you somehow... Um, and cranks you in the back of the noggin and takes all your weapons away. And by takes all your weapons away, I mean takes the bow off your back in the cutscene, and then when you get out of the cutscene, not only is your bow gone, so is your pistol that was in your si that you have as a sidearm, the shotgun, and AK-47 you're probably carrying as well just disappear. So you can't use any of those. I was mad enough he took my bow. I used my bow most of the time. That's where most, most of my perks were. Um, but... And then the game forces you 
to you to do a very to defeat him in one very specific way, because it's uh, you have to sneak up behind him, and the best way of doing that is using their you can distract guys by throwing cans that I never used in the whole game except where they literally made me because it's <laughs> stupid. Um, or I can shoot guys with or my if I gun. really want to distract them, I can shoot an arrow and the look of where I shot the arrow. Why do I need a stupid tin can? There's a knocking mechanic in Metal Gear where I can like get a guard to come over here, and there's not been a situation in which I want that. Um, yeah, if I want to be where the guard is, I will go to the guard. It's fine. Mm-hmm. But usually, uh, I want the guard's friend to fuck off, so I shoot somewhere else with like you know a silenced weapon. But um, and then you have to sneak up behind him and stab him in the back a couple times. Um, the first time it's easier, and the second time he's sh- shooting grenades everywhere, and you basically got to trick the AI into going around a corner where it can't see you, and then <laughs> play ring around the rosy around a column for about 20 seconds until it forgets you're on the other side of the column, and then you stab him again. Um, and it's just, it was such a, and those are the two, bo- like, those are the final bosses. Because yeah. after that, it's a cutscene. Like, after that, the whole rest of the ending is a cutscene. So... It was really kind of disappointing, and I think that might be why ultimately my brain is like, I didn't like that one as much, because the final boss sequence against the, in the first game was way better. You know, I, it was I, much more of like a gauntlet where you had to fight a bunch of dudes, and there was a bunch of really hard platforming. And I've noticed more and more as time goes on, it seems like game devs, um, big or small, just have no clue how to end a fucking game. Like even as much as I like Mass Effect Three, there is a little bit of how the fuck do we end this and make it compelling? I remember the first uh, um, Army of Two game, which we really liked, was, you know, you press A to kill. Yeah, the, the, look, I don't mind. I wouldn't have minded if, honestly, if it was a QTE. Sure. Um, well, and that game had a lot of those the, anyway, so. the very last bit of the fight is a QTE. You gotta dodge and, and stab him, and, and you stab him in the heart with your knife, which is your combat knife, hilariously doesn't get used in combat a except for this one time and for like killing animations for like stealth kills and stuff um but like that 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 part was fine if it had been more of a qte or if it had been a bunch of qte segments mixed up by me having to hide from him you could have used the game's mechanics in a better way Mm -hmm. there they just They didn't do it very satisfyingly, and then, like, she almost walks away from him, which would have, like, hashtag triggered me. (laughs) Um, Because that was, again, again, you're walk no, shoot him! And then he, like, says some mean shit and gets you to turn around. And I think at that point the game was giving me the option to either turn around and kill him or continue on my path and just disregard him. I don't actually know because I ran over there as fast as they would let me and stabbed him in the fucking head with an arrow. <laughs> <laughs> but even even Dark Souls, I do love Dark Souls, but every one of the, eh, two did it really good. But uh, one and three, the game, you just sort of... In the first game, and I've mentioned this before, I'll say it again because it's weird, I accidentally defeated the final boss. I, I expected... Like you were just walking into the room, well, right? Like, okay, yeah. They, so the, the last part of this game that's uh, about 10 years old, so fuck you, um, <laughs> uh, is uh, you're walking into the first kiln. And, man, I grew up on Final Fantasy and Mega Man, okay? And fuck, even Super Mario Brothers. I expect, like, a big to-do before I get to fight the final boss. Yeah, you expect, like, and and to their credit, Tomb Ra- Rise of the Tomb Raider gave me that big, there was a big to-do. Yeah. Beforehand. And, um, you know, and then I expect that final boss to, like, make me shit my pants a little bit. Uh, but I walked into what I figured was going to be the door to the final dungeon, and there was Gwyn. And he came at me, bro. Like, there wasn't... I don't even think there was a cutscene. He just came at me. And uh, so I started fighting him, and I won. And that was it. <laughs> that's not That's not any testament to my skill. I was in smoke armor, you know. Whatever. But uh, Dark Souls 3, a little bit better. You know, you, you really knew that there was no dungeon. They made that very clear. You're outside. You're you're the area you're going into is a big basin with no obvious exits. This is just a fight place, and it was a really good fight. But uh, 
still just sort of a, and that's it. You did it. You did the thing. Uh, that's what we had. Thank you for coming. Uh, <laughs> um, whereas like the Metal Gear games, um, even taking away your weapons reminded me of Metal Gear 1 and I think uh, 4. I haven't played 4, but I believe the final boss ba- battle is um, an echo of Metal Gear Solid, where uh, in Metal Gear Solid, one of the last fights you have is um, Liquid Snake takes all of your gear and you guys fist fight shirtless on top of a Metal Gear. Right. I'm not saying it's taking away all of my gear. Is well, no, and I'm saying like that could you be can, done well. Do, uh, an example from a game I really liked is the reboot. I'm the only one that liked it, I think. Uh, the reboot of Turok. Um, yeah, I, I am the guy who likes reboots of classic beloved um, video game series, but not the original games. I, I really like the original the, Turok was complicated. I, I really like the reboot of Turok, and the whole blast boss battle is a QTE. Like it's a long, complicated, hard QTE, mm-hmm. and that's good. It looked really cool and cinematic, and I don't mind that. I, it's not that I mind. You know, I, I did sort of mind that. They didn't make it so that, like, if you try and melee Constantine in Rise of the Tomb Raider, he, like, knocks you away, or he's, like, super cool and strong, because he's, he's, you know, a big, tough, religious zealot, so he, like, grabs your axe and, like, punches you in the face or something. They could have done any of that. No, he just sort of, like, gets knocked to the side and, and like, tries to shoot you, and you can, like, every other mook in the game, he, he reacts exactly the same as every other mook in the game, except he doesn't appear to be taking damage. Because I sat there and literally wailed on him for two minutes, just venting my game-long frustration at this dickbag for having cutscene immunity the whole game. And he didn't, he didn't take any damage. I had to do the sneaky thing. It, the game wanted me to do the sneaky thing. Because if it was letting me take... If he, if he had been taking damage, I, it would have been like, and now you fight. And now, now, Croft, you fight me. And I'm cool. And I'm wearing armor. And I have a laser shotgun. And then Warcroft just whips out two hand axes and completely wrecks him. <clears throat> Which would have been much funnier for me. Would have been much more satisfying. And thank you for mentioning that because that's part of what I was saying about, you know, how taking your gear can be done well. Yeah, that would have been awesome. That should have been a bonus, you know, ending. A slightly alternate ending the way you, you beat him or something like that. Like, and instead what... of sneaking, I literally ran directly at him, took a shotgun blast to the face, and then wrecked him. <clears throat> yeah. Wreckeronied his pepperoni. <laughs> um... You know, it, it can be done well. It's about tone. It's about preserving the tone of the rest of the game. In that sense, Dark Souls probably does it just fine because there's a lot of, well, that was a god and it's dead now. What uh, do I do now? To be absolutely <laughs> fair, I think they did. I think they were trying to preserve the tone of the rest of the game, but I play Tomb Raider a bit like you play Assassin's Creed. Ah, uh, so they intended for you to, to walk away and be the bigger person and not... <laughs> and I, not, not stomp up there, take an arrow out of your quiver and jam it into his jawbone <laughs> as quickly as you can. I think I missed dialogue. I... <laughs> Because I didn't want I didn't want the dialogue to finish, and then she like auto walks away. No, 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 no. I've been trying to kill these two assholes the whole game, and they didn't let me kill Anna, the the female antagonist, your stepmom. Uh, spoilers, by the way. Uh, but... <laughs> I don't think so. I knew that, and I <laughs> like, wasn't playing the I game. Think, I think you I think you know that pretty much from the second time she shows up. <laughs> uh, first, maybe. Uh... <laughs> Although to be fair, I figured every female NPC in this game was your mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably your mom. That's probably also your mom. How many moms you got? <laughs> but like your stepmom is, is, like I said, the plot's a little predictable, and honestly, it's a little. We'll use the term tropey. Um, but they didn't let me kill her. There was one, literally, the only time in the game when you have an active gun that you are in control of, and she is on screen. I tried to shoot her. <laughs> The game killed me for it because she is one of the only things keeping you from falling down a chasm. I was like, no, nah, I'm Laura Croft. I'll figure it out. I got I got hand axes and stuff. <laughs> shoot, shoot, shooty, shoot. No, okay, fair enough game. I had to try. Oh. <laughs> Shot her right in the ass, I did. Yeah, was, you sure did. Like I said, the second it was available. I just, I got so <laughs> frustrated with their cutscene immunity. <clears throat> And to, Laura Cro- to Laura's credit, there was one time when she was, like, monologuing on a precipice, and Laura immediately shot her. <laughs> yeah, I remember that, too. I wasn't around for much of your playthrough, but I saw some choice moments. But, uh, 
But it was a good game otherwise, right? I, I'm bitching about the parts of it I found objectionable. The rest of it was really fun. I love the mechanics. I like the puzzle things. Some of, sometimes they can be frustrating. Sometimes they can be a little, uh, all right, fine game. Yeah, okay, no, I see it. I see the thing. It's painted red. <laughs> but, I mean, other, but it is a fun game. The only time I've genuinely been frustrated with a puzzle was at part of the DLC. And that's supposed to be, like, harder in general, so that's fair. The only part of it that frustrated me was one of the mechanics that my character has doesn't work on that puzzle for reasons... Uh, because it would make it too easy. But that's the only part of it that frustrated me. I mean, you know, but could it have been one of those things that was easy enough to, like, oh, my axe can't hook into blue beams... That they could have like, fixed with. Like, a voice line, yeah. Like, yeah. oh, this wood is old and rotted. It can't... Like, I can't grip onto it with an axe. And they did, like, there's... They did that for other things in small ways there. Like, it's harder to grab onto a bunch of ledges because they're covered in ice. Fair enough. But your axe specifically hooks into ice. That's what it's for. Mm. <laughs> uh... I'll well, bookend this with um, some other stuff I've been into. Uh, we did end up talking mostly about Tomb Raider and its offshoots. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, Injustice 2 dropped its last major patch um, for the Legendary Edition. I don't think it's in stores yet, but uh, if you already owned the game, came with a whole bunch of new gear, added 10 more levels to your characters, um, all kinds of good shit. New tutorial session that teaches you about like fighting game terminology and mechanics in general. Um, and they kind of hinted that that might be a big part of the next Mortal Kombat game as well, which is pretty thrilling. Uh, yeah, and I've been playing a lot of that, been grinding a lot of guys up on uh, auto level because I only really play Ninja Turtles and Black Manta at this point. Um, <laughs> those I'll do the honest way, and I got them to 20, the on, well, quote-unquote honest. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I want to get my skills sharp. If I ever decided to get more into Injustice, I would literally go and, and like, ask for screens of how you, tra of how you tune your, your AI. <laughs> my Green Arrow AI is ridiculous. Like, just, you think my Batman's good? Holy shit. Like, and then just use, just set it to the exact same settings you have, and then just let it auto to 20 for all of them. Yeah. Well, that's 30 what, now. That's, that's what I would do. Um, and it's what I've done with most characters, but I, I want to be better at the mechanics. Honestly, it's at the point if I pick up a character who isn't mostly the turtles, uh, to a lesser extent Black Manta, I am uh, i don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, what are your combos? How do you move? Because each character is so unique even. Um, I, if you, well, you will for the tournament, but I definitely recommend trying Adam and Enchantress. They are so unique. Really Oh, I'm going to try characters. all the guys. Um, I'm going to try them all again. Because... And the tournament will be coming. Uh, I said we were going to get it done earlier this year. It didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes that happens in the tournament's podcast. Yeah. Um, trying to get the structure of that all set up so we can figure out how to what games to include if we need to rent anything. Because uh, I know we both like Tekken 7. So, um, And uh, Gamefly was thirsty, and they were like, hey, we will give you the two games out at once subscription for a month for a dollar. And I was like, sweet. So I played a little Mario Kart 8. That's been pretty. That's actually been really good. Um, and, uh, I know that's not news. Um, and I got Sonic Forces. I haven't checked that out yet, but, uh, I don't assume I'll finish it. <laughs> but I do want to at least want to look at it. Um, I think that's, uh, that's about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, of the major things that happened this week that are podcast the last, material. last couple of weeks. Yeah, the last couple of weeks. Um, I think that's about it. I think we're done here, yeah? Yeah. Everything's better when nerds talk about it. Fuck it, let's get